Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbia Online, a congregation striving to embody courageous love, radical welcome, and deep connection. We are so grateful to be gathering this morning, remembering that our church is not a building, but is a beloved community of all of us together. I'm the Reverend Molly Hauschgord and the minister of this congregation, and I'm so glad to welcome you to our community this morning. Although we miss gathering in person on Sundays, our online services have given us the opportunity to connect with people we might not have otherwise. And so we always want to wish a particularly warm welcome to any visiting members of the Jefferson City Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, as well as all of you visiting us from Missouri or beyond. We always want to share a few comments about protocol for our online worship. We are in Zoom and streaming live on Facebook. For those of you joining us in Zoom, we are on webinar mode, which means we can't hear or see you. Feel free to eat your breakfast in your PJs and don't worry if things are a bit noisy. You will be able to say hello and to interact with the service through the chat feature on Zoom and through the comments on Facebook. If you're with us on Zoom, make sure you select everyone so that we can all see your comment. Otherwise, it'll just come to us in the panelists. This will be particularly useful when it's time to share our joys and sorrows and prayers a bit later in the service. We also want to share a few notes about accessibility. We are using Zoom's native auto captioning service, which means you should be seeing automatically generated subtitles at the bottom of your screen. You will have several options for these if you click the closed caption or live transcript button that should appear on your screen. If you don't want to see subtitles or find them distracting, you can use the hide subtitles option to turn them off. If you prefer your captions to appear as a live transcript at the side of the screen, you can choose view full transcript on the same menu. We know that auto captioning is never entirely accurate, but we're finding that it's fairly close. We will also be providing spoken descriptions of the videos and images that we use. And we'd like to invite you to contact us if you have any other inclusion or accessibility needs that we can strive to meet in our online worship. You can email me at minister at uucomo.org. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we'd like to invite you to fill out a digital visitor's card at the link provided in the chat to let you know, let us know a little bit about you. I'd also like to thank, as always, the folks that make our online worship possible. Thank you to our online usher today, Holly Daly, our worship associate, Anna Chippendale, and to our amazing staff, as always, April Rodigero running slides, religious educator, Jamila Batchelder, music director Jeremy Wagner, and pianist Hans Bridger Harris. As you probably know, this is Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday, a sacred day in the Unitarian Universalist liturgical year when we remember the legacy of Dr. King and the countless civil rights activists of our past, celebrate, celebrate the civil rights movements of our present, and recommit ourselves to the justice work that lies before us all. This Sunday, we are very, very glad and grateful to have as a returning guest in our pulpit, a longtime civil rights leader here in Columbia, a wise professor, a prophetic pastor, a beloved colleague and dear friend of the church, the Reverend Dr. C.W. Dawson Jr. Thank you for joining us this morning, Reverend Dr. Dawson. So let us now settle into this time and place together with the help of our prelude. This week's prelude is MLK, a piece written in honor of Dr. King by Bob Chillicott and performed in this recording by the Columbia Community Gospel Choir, directed by Lamont Walker and Emily Edgington Andrews. The audio will play while a still image of the choir is shown on the screen. They are a multiracial group of singers pictured here standing on risers behind a piano wearing colorful jewel tone dress shirts. Please enjoy.
Our opening words this morning are by the Reverend Anna Bladel of Enfleshed, a liturgy project of spiritual nourishment for collective liberation. Wild and wondrous God, creator of all, spirit of life and love and liberation, mother and lover and conspirator and friend, tender one who tends to possibility and dream. You have called us together in this time and this place, and so here we are, full of wisdom and wondering, full of hope and fear, weariness and longing, passion and pain. Unleash your wild power in us, we pray. Deepen our connection with you and with each other. Deepen our capacity to hear the voices of those too often silenced, to honor the presence of those too often erased, to center the wisdoms of those too often pushed to the margins, that we might bear witness to the complex truths of our holy, holy lives and the complex needs of your beautiful broken world. We remember those who have brought us to this place, who have labored with you, who have labored for us to make a way out of no way, dreaming dreams and visioning visions, both ancient and new, the communion of prophets, saints, and teachers, queer lovers and freedom fighters and fugitive dreamers, our ancestors, the great cloud of witnesses, those who whisper their wisdom in stories, songs, and poems, those who gave birth to movements and moments of liberation, of healing, of justice, of love. We remember and honor the legacies of resistance to evil, injustice, and oppression that have enabled our being and invited our becoming. We remember and honor the legacies of faith in beauty, joy, and gladness that have enabled our being and invited our becoming. So beloveds, bring your beautiful, messy, aching, wondrous selves. Bring your laughter and your rage. Bring your tears and your fears. Bring the insight that only you can offer. The imagination that bursts open old wineskins, because divinity dwells in our flesh and our bones, because we need each other, because our liberation is bound up together, because we must love and support one another, because we fight for each other and learn from each other, because we have nothing to lose but our chains, because the fear that nothing else is possible is deadening and deadly. Because the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house and any house built on white supremacy and colonialism, transphobia and anti-queerness, patriarchy and ableism and classism will hold all of us captive and crush all of our dreams. Because freedom is a constant struggle and the labor is hard, but it is holy too. And there is joy to be found in laboring together. Because the healing salve of salvation spills over, overflows, and cannot be controlled or contained. So come, spirit, come. Convict us with curiosity. Convert us from complacency. Consecrate us to compassion, conspire with us as we lean into the new life emerging from the destruction around us. Come, let us worship together. Our gathering hymn is, has become a beloved favorite of ours in this time, Circle Round for Freedom. In this video, the hymn is led by Dr. Glenn Thomas Rideout, the Director of Worship and Music at the UU Church in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Dr. Rideout is pictured in this video 
a man with brown skin and long dreadlocks pulled back from his face. He is in an office with art on the wall and spiritual objects like candles and a singing bowl scattered across the desk. He leans on the desk and sings with emotion. His hand slowly circles along with the lyrics of the song. The lyrics are shown at the bottom of the video and we will also post them in the chat for better access. We invite you to sing along from home. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle For the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Circle round for freedom. Circle round for peace. For We now come to the chalice lighting and words of affirmation. As we share an image of our church chalice on the screen, you may wish to light a candle at home or look, look in the chat for a digital chalice. As we now light our chalice, symbol of our faith in the sustaining cup of community in the inextinguishable flame of the human spirit. Will you please join me in lifting up your voices in homes across the city, country, and world to share our weekly words of affirmation shown in the slide and shared in the chat. Love is the spirit of this church and service as its law. This is our great covenant 
to dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another. Good morning. This weekend, we remember Dr. Martin Luther King and all those ancestors who have come before and who helped bend the arc of the moral universe toward justice. Their memory sustains us. It inspires us to find the strength to continue in the struggle. And it also reminds us to celebrate the joy of each victory, victories that they had dreamed of and believed in, but get, didn't get the opportunity to experience. There was a moment last week before white supremacy once again so stunningly claimed all of our attention where there was one of those historic victories, one of those moments where the arc of the universe bends. A black man, a pastor from Martin Luther King's church and a Jewish man mentored by John Lewis won Senate seats in Georgia, thanks to the tireless work of organizers, most particularly women of color. And when this happened, I remember thinking, I wish, I wish Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King and John Lewis and Joseph Lowry and C.T. Vivian and Rabbi Abe Heschel could see this, to see this moment that, that would have seemed impossible uh, 70 years ago. And two things occurred to me. Those that came before us, the, their presence is always there in all the work of justice. That they are a part of us and this long lineage of justice seekers helps us as we work to continue to add to that chain of, of justice makers. And I also thought of the quote of Dr. King. And he said, I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen the promised land and I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. And for myself as someone who struggles with hope, it's a difficult, um, a difficult thing for me to feel. Uh, it struck me what enormous spiritual strength it takes to climb that mountain and see the promised land when things are so grim in the here and now. But someday, for us, our descendants will want to know that we saw it too and that our presence can be there with them when they arrive at those moments of victory. And so to become the good ancestors that we need to be someday, we need now to see the possibility of the future, no matter how distant or even impossible it seems. Our children and our children's children need us to see it now. So for our centering, I want to begin by invoking the memory of our justice-seeking ancestors, anyone who inspires you. And if you want, you can name them in the chat and let their compassion and moral courage fill the space around you and around all of us today. Francis Ellen Watkins Harper, Black Unitarian uh, abolitionist and poet. Dolores Huerta, migrant workers activist.
Ella Baker, civil rights organizer. James Reed, the UU civil rights organizer and minister. John Lewis, tireless, passionate civil rights worker and congressman. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Berta Conceres, environmentalist and advocate for indigenous people. Tommy Raskin, who tried to change the world. Brian and Chris DeFacio, former members of this church. Feel all their presence with us today. Elijah Cumming, late congressman and civil rights activist, all of them and so many more. And now, inspired by their strength, let yourself imagine your wildest dreams for the future. Those dreams that feel almost frightening to allow, to allow ourselves to hope for. And you can share those as well and I will read them out. Abolition of prisons and policing, safely based in community abundance and thriving. Immigrants welcomed and cared for. Free, fair and secure elections. All gender celebrated as holy and whole. All bodies have what they need to thrive. Liberty and justice for all. Voting rights assured and celebrated for all. And I will let you continue dreaming those big, beautiful dreams. And imagine that moment when they arrive and where our descendants think of us and say, I hope wherever they are, they're looking down and seeing this moment. So right now, see it there with them. Let your love for this world fill the space around them. Let it fill the space around you. Let it mingle with the love of the ancestors back through the generations. A love stronger than any hatred. and commit yourself again toward bending the arc toward justice so we can arrive at the promised land. And now surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, those who have gone before, the children of our children's children, surrounded in love and hope, we share 
our joys and sorrows, the prayers of our congregation. As we share on the screen an image of lit candles and our joys and sorrows stones, I invite you to bring your loving attention and compassionate presence to our community. Let us hold one another in heart across the distance, remembering our connection and feeling that we are held in love amid life sorrows and joys alike. I will begin by sharing the joys and sorrows submitted at our website and a few prayers for our nation. Then I will invite those gathered to share your joys and sorrows in the chat. We join our hearts with Desi Long in sorrow as she shares that her brother George Monger passed away January 13th at Arcadia Methodist Hospital of COVID-19. Desi is her la his last surviving immediate family. Our hearts are with you, Desi. Let us join our hearts in prayer for all those who fear or are threatened with white supremacist violence in these coming days. Those liberal religious communities facing threat, those state capitals facing threat, those sites of civic community facing threat. And let us remember in our prayer, all those who often live under threat of white supremacist violence, for whom this escalation is no surprise. Let us join our hearts in deep love and sorrow for all those lost to the COVID-19 pandemic, all those whom we continue to lose, all who are sick or worried, all who have lost jobs, stability, We join our hearts in prayer and the hope this week of a peaceful transition of power, a bedrock of democratic governance. We pray for all those working to ensure that peaceful transfer occurs. We join our hearts in a prayer for the steadiness of our liberation organizing, that we keep working, keep dreaming, even as the dangers and resistance around us is intense. We join our hearts with all of you in the prayers and joys and sorrows that you share in the chat. We join our hearts with Kira and Larry in a healing wish to James Cutts, who sprained an ankle on the ice yesterday. We join our hearts with Tanette, who shares great joy that son and daughter-in-law are expecting their first child. We join our hearts with Connie, who shares joy for the snow falling an entire day, allowing us peace to relax and read and drink coffee and enough energy to make a snow witch with her daughter. We join our hearts with Ben who celebrates gratefully getting his first dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine. What hope. We join our hearts with Barbara Carter who remembers her son. Wednesday would have been his 53rd birthday and this Wednesday will be the 12th anniversary of his death. Barbara, we remember Tony with you in this difficult time of year. We join our hearts with Jim Shanto in joy at getting the COVID-19 vaccine this week. We join our hearts with Mindy McPherson who shares concern for educators and kids returning to in-person learning this week. I 
hope it's all right for me to share. I think it is since they posted on Facebook that we congratulate Pac Matthews and Rebecca Graves on the birth of their first grandbaby this last week. These things and so many more joys and sorrows and prayers we hold together in the love of our community. I invite you now to join me in prayer with the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I invite all of you who join in our gathering with many different beliefs and spiritual paths to hear these words through any theological difference to the longings and commitments shared across many beliefs in the transforming spirit of love. I pray in the words of Dr. King, oh God, we thank you for the lives of great saints and prophets in the past who have revealed to us that we can stand up amid the problems and difficulties and trials of life and not give in. We thank you for our foreparents who have given us something in the midst of the darkness of exploitation and oppression to keep going. Grant that we will go on with the proper faith and the proper determination of will so that we will be able to make a creative contribution to this world. God, we thank you for the inspiration of Jesus. Grant that we will love you with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves, even our enemy neighbors. And we ask you, God, in these days of emotional tension, when the problems of the world are gigantic in extent and chaotic in detail, to be with us in our going out and our coming in, in our rising up and in our lying down, in our moments of joy and in our moments of sorrow. We thank you for your church founded upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray, but to go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depends on us and not upon you. Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together until that day when all God's children will rejoice in one common band of humanity, in the reign of our God. We pray. Amen. Our prayer response is an excerpt of the Moses Hogan spiritual Hear My Prayer, arranged and performed by opera singer Callie Day at the Berea College Spiritual Festival. In this video, the artist is pictured in an informal setting, standing on a stage in front of a piano with several people gathered casually watching. She's an African-American woman with short hair and glasses wearing a white dress shirt and long sweater vest. She is singing the end of the song in a spirit of deep prayer with her eyes closed and her body moved by the music.
Our first reading is from the civil rights leader, Fanny uh, Lou Hammer. Hammer. As I read the words, there is a still image of her on the screen in black and white photo. She's a middle-aged African-American woman in a striped jacket speaking to a microphone. She's surrounded by several young black activists, both men and women. There is, appears to be a large gathering in the background with protest signs. These words are excerpts from her writing. Nobody's free until everyone's free. There is one thing you have got to learn about our movement. Three people are better than no people. One day I know the struggle will change. There's got to be change, not only for Mississippi, not only for the people of the United States, but people all over the world. Is this America, the land of the free and the home of the brave where we have to sleep with our telephones off the hooks because our lives are being threatened daily? Because we want to live as decent human beings in America? White Americans don't really know what in the world to do because when they put us behind them, that's where they made their mistake. They put us behind them and we watched every move they made. I feel sorry for anybody that could let hate wrap them up. Ain't no such thing as I can hate anybody and hope to see the face of God. Our second reading is from the Reverend Dr. Luther Martin King Jr. who is pictured on the screen in a color photo. There we go. Dr. Martin Luther King, who's pictured in the, uh, on the screen in a, in a colored photo with several other African-American leaders and several white men all marching behind him. Protest signs can be seen in the background and Dr. King is positioned in front of the men with whom he is marching. These are the words that are excerpts from Dr. Martin Luther King. I refuse to accept the view that humankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daylight of peace and unity can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final words. Nothing in this world is more dangerous than the sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. We must accept finite disappointments, but never lose infinite hope. The time is always right to do what is right. I said, the time is always right to do what is right. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is way too great a burden to bear. Human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. Every step toward the goal of justice requires suf sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individually, individuals. History will have to record that the greatest tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. Our interlude is Lift Every Voice and Sing, also known as the Black National Anthem, here arranged and performed by a virtual alumni choir of the Stanford Talisman Choir. 
The choir describes themselves as a group of singers on Stanford's campus who since our origins have sung music stemming from Black liberation struggles across the world. This video is shown with permission from the choir after making a donation to Black liberation organizing efforts in honor of its use. The choir is pictured in the video in many changing squares, slowly highlighting different singers. The choir is a multiracial gathering of performers, and the video particularly highlights the Black singers of the choir in many close-ups. The rotating images of many faces all sing with feeling. Civil rights activist James Weldon Johnson wrote Lift Their Voice and Sing as a poem, which was set to music by his brother John Roseman Johnson in 1899. The song is now known as the Black National Anthem in America. It is a protest, a hymn, and a prayer of profound significance for our people. We lift every voice and sing to express ourselves. We lift every voice to show that we have strength in numbers and we will not be silent. We lift every voice and sing to be lifted, liberated, and free. Freedom, the power to determine action without restraint. Freedom, the absence of or release from ties, obligations, or restrictions. Freedom the ease or facility of movement or action, freedom, frankness or boldness in manner or speech, freedom, a political right. Until we are all free, none of us is free. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the
We now welcome to our virtual pulpit, the Reverend Dr. C.W. Dawson. Good morning, everyone. And uh, Pastor Molly, thank you so much for this opportunity to the board and the members of the great uh, Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbia and all of you who have uh, courageously decided to come here, this old country boy. Thank you so much for being here. One of the nice things about um, worship with you all is if I'm terrible, the music, the readings and everything else is wonderful. And I say today is not an exception. Um, the music has been awesome. I'll be honest with you. Um, usually I come to this time of the year with um, hesitancy. So many times I have sat in celebrations honoring the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, his words, his ministry, and left the places in which I was in worship feeling horrible. Were the songs simply sung just to commemorate and to feel a sense of I've done whatever I needed to do? We remember the words like that the children of former slaves and the children of former slaveholders would finally be one, but we forget about the fact that the very person who spoke the words was murdered, murdered by mean-hearted, mean folk. This year, it's even a little more difficult because ladies and gentlemen, we are standing in the midst of darkness. Our darkness is, is clouded by an attitude by the pandemic. Just the other day now, our highest day I believe was yesterday, 4,200 people have died of COVID-19 in one day. Last week, it's, it, the darkness is the fact that over a million people filed for unemployment last week. We are in darkness because we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. In fact, in fact, 
we kind of thought that even though we have seen some bad historical days, all of that foolishness might really be over. Yeah, we remember Virginia, but no one seemed to anticipate what happened on January the 6th. We've seen rebellion, but, but ladies and gentlemen, what made it so much more is that it was incited by the man who was supposed to be president of the United States, a pimp who wanted to be king. We are in the midst of darkness. It's a psychological darkness. It's a darkness that has invaded every aspect of our lives. We stand in the midst of darkness. And so last Friday, you all know that it is the historical birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. What, what, does, what can that Southern preacher that, that thinker educated first in the black church and later at Boston. What, what, what can that short, fiery speaker say to us in the midst of standing in darkness for this moment? Let me remind you what darkness does. From Dr. King, I realized that darkness is both a liar and a thief. <laughs> It's a liar in that when you are in the midst of darkness, one, you feel like you're all alone. Two, you feel like it'll never end. It has a way of making you uncomfortable and seeing things that aren't really there. When I was a kid, I used to play Scare Yourself to Death. And a group of my buddies and I, the janitor at the school we went to was a really nice man. He gave us a place to play in school. He probably should have been fired for doing it, but he let us play in the school. And we turned all the lights out and we would divide up and we would be in the darkness. And the goal of the game was to try to find somebody before they found you. When you're in darkness, you see stuff that doesn't exist. <laughs> in the darkness that's the way it feels now it's a liar it'll tell you that something's there that's not there we are in america in the midst of darkness what well, if you don't believe me how come 74 million people still believe that the election was stolen see things that's not there. Doesn't matter how many court decisions, doesn't matter how many um, um, states have ratified, doesn't, doesn't matter about all that. They still believe what's not there. And the other thing about darkness is that as a thief, it will steal your joy. And listen, those of you who never heard me preach before, if I'm a little loud for you, I, I, you gonna get, it's going to get louder. It'll steal your joy. It can steal your hope. Jazz singer said it'll make you feel like a motherless child. And so here we are. Here we are. The question is, Martin, can you, can you speak to our hearts? Because I know it's not just your words, it's the word of an ultimate reality bigger than you. Could you speak to us in a manner today and remind us something to do in the midst of the darkness? This is what I have. One, stand. <laughs> listen, listen, the psychological temptation in darkness is to run. And, but the problem is you can't see. So if you run, you end up falling. You end up hurting yourself or somebody else. Stand. Yeah. Excuse me, but the Tanakh said when, when Moses was at the edge of the Red Sea, yeah. the first thing they said was, what shall we do? And Moses said, stand still and see a great miracle before you. Mm -hmm. Stand. And I don't mean be inactive. So I don't want someone to take this out of context. What I mean is stand and speak truth to power. That's right. 
right. instead of playing like you don't hear at work, oh. those little racist, sexist, homophobic things people say all around you, stand on the truth, speak. That's right. That's right. That's right. I remember I was in an interracial uh, council meeting, meeting of, mm-hmm. of, of the folks of Columbia who, mm-hmm. who are in position and years ago and and uh, they invited also some people, just plain old folk for the community. Uh-huh. And an Anglo woman said, you know, I just don't know what to do. I, I want to help. I want to be part of the solution. Uh-huh. And, and yet I, I'm surrounded by these people who say the most ugly and racist things. And I just don't know what to do. Yeah. And an uh, older black woman, probably with a uh, fifth grade education, uh-huh but a PhD in people said, yeah, yeah. when you were there, did you leave your mouth at home? <laughs> Why didn't you speak up? Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you challenge right there in the space, the place that you were? Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, surrounded by this darkness. This is a darkness that, that we have forgotten. See, we, we, we knew that yeah. The Proud Boys existed, and we knew that the Boogaloo Bandits were around, and we, we knew that to intellectually. But ladies and gentlemen, it took seeing that police officer crushed in the door. Yep. It, it, it took watching a person being beaten mm-hmm. by the flagpole yep. that held a Trump and America sign. It took the words of, of that officer who, who said the crowd kept shouting, take his gun and kill him. Yes. Yes. Come on here. Speak on it. Stand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going to be scary. It's going to be crazy. Yes, but, it is. but Martin stood. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That even though Bull Connor and, and the boys threatened with water hoses and dogs, yes, it did. stood. Yes, it did. Might get beat down. Remember Pettis County Bridge? Remember Come Pettis on. Bridge? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Stand. Come on. Come on. Right. He was in. He was in. Y'all remember this? He he was in New York, and he had just finished giving a speech, and a woman that looked like him. I, I simply say this because everybody who looked like you is not like you. A woman that looked like him stabbed him. And, and, and they said the only reason he lived was because he didn't sneeze. And he said, I, I'm, I thank God. I, I, I thank God I didn't sneeze. But in spite of being stabbed, in spite of being bullied, in spite of being threatened, Come on. Stand. Ladies and gentlemen, if nothing else we learn from this, we have to stand. Yeah. In spite of uh, Josh Hawley, stand. That's right. That's right. <laughs> in, 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 in spite of yeah. what Mr. Crump, oh, his name's Trump, isn't it? No, Mr. Yeah. Crump's name is stand. Yeah. All of those folks like, like, like Vicki Hartzler and others who are supposed to represent us in this state who stood with a lie, we have to stand for the truth. That's right. Stand. Yeah. The yeah. second thing you have to do in the midst of darkness, I learned from Martin, is um, you have to be a light where there is no light. That's right. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry, but Martin and I grew up in the same kind of church. And the little church we used to grow up in, they, they used to sing that song. You know that song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Y'all remember in the old days when, when we had black and white TV, I know some of y'all not old come enough on, to remember. There used to be a program that come on and, and it would start out in darkness. Yeah. And the quote came from the Roman Catholic Church that said, it is better to light one candle yeah. than to curse the darkness. Be a light where there is no light. Come on. I, I listen. Well, you know, Unitarians, I get on you all because y'all don't tell folk more about you. 
but you are being a light when you let homeless folks stay in your church. You're yeah. being a light when you feed the hungry. You are being a light when you refuse to side, even sometimes with fellow churches that are homophobic and sexist, you, you, you are being a light when, when, when all around you, people could have had their lights and utilities turned off and y'all paid them. And all I'm saying to you right now is while I am celebrating what you have done, there's much more we must do. Amen. And to do Amen. it, we have to be a light. Listen, yeah. listen, you, you probably hear my wife in the background. Yeah. But listen, let me let me tell you something. Preach, I used to carry a pistol. Preach, when I lived in Detroit and pastored mm -hmm. in Detroit, we had we were robbed in the worship right after the offering. And the human in me. Yeah. Yeah, good God about it. Come on said, I'm going to get me a nine millimeter. Yeah. And I did. And I used to carry it. I used to wear it under my robe in the pulpit. Yeah. I used to carry it in my bag. I got rid of my weapon because I remember the Nazarene said, uh, Dawson, he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Yeah. I got rid of it. But after watching January 6th, I started to think to myself, maybe I ought to get some weapons again. And church, family, friends, students. Come on. No, because I refuse to be intimidated uh -huh. by agents of evil. Yeah. That if I'm going to be a light, I have to stand without sword or shield. It's not by spear. It's not by pistol that the prophecy that is given to me comes out. I have to stand without a weapon. Martin Luther said the body they may kill, but the faith they cannot steal. You, you have to stand and you have to be a light. Be a light. Amen. Be a soldier yeah. of peace. Come on now, come on. Be a warrior uh -huh. for justice. Yes. That you have to be the light. Oh, yes. And then I'm, I'm going to leave you with oh, this because yes. I, I, we're going a little long and I don't want, on, I want y'all to hear me another time if y'all yes. let me. And it goes like this. Yeah. Hold fast. I know I'm going to lose some of y'all right now. Go ahead. Hold fast to the God you met yes. at the altar of your heart. Did you, did you not hear the last verse of lift every voice and sing, God of our weary years uh -huh. and God of our silent tears? See, it. see, I was surprised. Uh, no, I, I, I was disappointed on January 6th Ooh. to see what happened at the Capitol. But I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Right, right, right. I, 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 I'm not Amen. surprised. <laughs> How could I be surprised? Right. I was captured uh -huh. in Africa and brought yeah. here on slave ships. Yeah. I was hunted down. <laughs> what now we call the police, uh -huh. what used to be called uh, slave catchers. Uh -huh. I, I, I was not surprised. Right. I, I have a history of where I watch right. people lynch folk and mutilate yeah. folk and beat folk. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm not surprised yeah. that white racist folk will go to any extreme right. in order to get their way. I'm not surprised. Right. What I am surprised about is how many folk who call themselves good folks said, Martin, say it, say it. shut their mouth. I was surprised. What I was surprised about is how many folks stood up on the floor of the Congress reciting pieces from Dr. Martin Luther King come on, come and on. yet was supporting that pimp president. I was surprised. Yeah. And yeah. then I had to touch yeah. and realize that's uh -huh. what evil does. Yes, indeed. And then it reminded me yes, that. Indeed. That the God I met at the altar of my heart uh -huh, uh -huh. has promised I'll mm -hmm. never leave you. Mm -hmm. No, sir. 
I was with your ancestral family. Amen. Yes, I was sir. with your grandfather and your yes. grandmother. Yes, sir. I was with your father and your mother. Yes, sir. I will be uh -huh. with you. Yes, he will. When your house was threatened with bombing. Yes, sir. When you, Dawson, were shot at. Yes, sir. When folks wanted to beat you up and Come hurt on. you. Come on. Didn't I build a fence around yes, you? Yes, he did. I'm here to tell you, you, you don't have to believe my report, but you know, I'm this way because I learned a long time ago, I Come could on. never have a religion I couldn't feel Amen. sometime. Right. And what I've learned, Amen. Martin and I both learned, uh -huh. yeah, is that you need, you need to meet and hold fast to the God that you met at the altar of your heart. Not the doctrine, not the tradition, right. not this, that, and the other. That's it's the God right. you know. That's right. Why do you think Martin's favorite song was, Precious Lord, take Amen. my hand and lead me on. Yes. <laughs> and though on. the battle is rough and though the going gets tough, if you hold fast to the God that you know at the altar of your heart, yes, yes, sir. We shall overcome. We shall, uh huh. We shall overcome. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. We shall mm -hmm. overcome. Yes. Someday, oh, deep in my heart. Yes, sir. I do believe uh -huh. we, shall we shall overcome uh -huh. some someday. Amen. 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 Amen and amen and amen. Pastor, thank you so much for pastoring to us and prophesying to us and preaching to us today. Our song of response to that word is the spiritual shine on me, led by African-American vocal artist and song leader, Melanie Damore. She is pictured on this video in three different images, singing each vocal part. She has chin length dreadlocks and wears a blue t-shirt that reads human and several bracelets on one arm. In each of the three images, she looks into the camera and moves to the music with embracing hand and arm gestures. She will invite you and we invite you to sing along from home as you're moved. Hello, you, you family. I'm going to sing a song with you called Shine On Me. It's an amazing spiritual that anybody can sing. And in these days when the things that we're dealing with, the feeling separate and all of that, and things seem so hard. This is one of those songs that you just throw your head back, put it in your medicine kit. All you have to do is ask. And here's how it goes. Shine on me, oh, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me, oh, shine on me. Yes, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Lift me up, oh, lift me up. Let the light from the lighthouse lift me up. 
Now is the time in our service when we join in the spiritual practice of generosity, guiding our hearts away from the fear and scarcity all around us and remembering that it is by sharing and supporting one another that we feel most human. This morning's Faith to Action collection is for the Missourians for Alternative to the Death Penalty, one of our partner organizations. And with, thir with uh, having had 13 executions in the last four months, it is a lot of work to be done. We invite your generous support. If you are giving online, please select the Faith, Faith to Action uh, button. And if you mail in a check, please write Faith to Action on the uh, memo line on your check. Right now, we thank and welcome Elise Max from the MADP for joining us this morning and sharing our thoughts about and telling us a little bit about the serious and important work that they are doing at this time. Great, thank you all so very much for inviting me to be with you this Sunday. Um, my name is Elise Max, and I am the state director at Missourians for Alternatives to the Death Penalty. I'm a middle-aged white woman sitting in a chair with a blue scarf and red glasses, and there are some plants you might be able to see behind me. As this moment has given me the opportunity to reflect on our work, the past few months and the past week have been one of the most harrowing and difficult times in our movement. On Friday night, the federal government conducted the 13th execution since July, when they executed Dustin Higgs, an innocent black man on Martin Luther King Jr's birthday. The loss of these 12 men and one woman will forever be a stain on the courts and this administration who brushed aside their serious claims of mental illness, intellectual disability, racial bias, prosecutorial misconduct, and more. 
we are hopeful that our collective message will send a strong message to President Biden that he must, not should, but must commute every single person on federal death row. A moratorium is not enough and could lead to more bloodshed in four or eight years from now. President-elect Biden campaigned on a promise to stop using the federal death penalty and incentivize states who do the same. But we know that Missouri has not shown mercy in the past. On May 19th, we were the first state to move forward during the pandemic with the execution of Walter Barton, a man who was most likely innocent, yet the courts never allowed him to present that claim. MADP is so grateful to be a recipient of your Faith in Action collection because we have so much work to do. Funds are used to prevent the execution of the 20 men currently living under a death sentence. Most of them are at the end of their appeals. And right now we work closely with their legal teams to lay the groundwork for upcoming clemency campaigns. Your contribution will support clemency for Ernest Lee Johnson from Boone County, a man with an intellectual and developmental disability and a traumatic brain injury who should absolutely not be eligible for execution. And even though we have yet to see mercy from our current administration, we know our work matters because there have been no new death sentences in our state since 2018. We believe Missourians reflect public opinion, which across the nation shows citizens are moving away from the belief that death is an appropriate punishment for murder. Your generous support helps target our work in high use counties by focusing on public education and prosecutor races. And in 2020, we had a record low number of pending capital cases, only 15 across the state. If we can continue to stop new death sentences and focus on clemency for the men going through appeals, we're on our way to abolition by attrition in Missouri. We remain dedicated and steadfast in our mission to abolish the death penalty, and we are grateful for your continued contributions to MADP. This is a path that is difficult to walk down, and we could not do it without you. So thank you so much for your support and your time today. And thank you, Elise, so much for joining us and for your essential work fighting for justice and dignity in Missouri and beyond. Um, I invite you all to give as generously as you are able. And Jeremy is going to pop on, I think, and tell us a little bit about the um, offertory song, uh, which has been, I believe, composed by one of his professors. So Jeremy, I'll turn it over to you. Yes, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Molly. And thank you, uh, Reverend Dawson, for your message. It was so powerful. Thank you. Um, the piece that we are playing for Offertory today is Until I Reach My Home, which has been arranged by Dr. Brandon Boyd, who teaches at MU. Um, the It is a collaboration between the Tallahassee uh, Community Chorus, as well as the FSU, uh, Florida State University's orchestra. And what we will see in the video is uh, that full orchestra with a choir behind uh, singing the piece that Dr. Boyd wrote specifically for Dr. Andre Thomas's retirement. Um, and it is a video of Dr. Boyd conducting the ensemble Please enjoy.
I think perhaps we will all go forth from this service to speak, to stand, to shine, inspired by powerful reminders from Reverend Dr. Dawson, inspired by the powerful memory of Dr. King. Our closing words are this week as they are every week from the Reverend Wayne Arneson. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard. The path is never clear and the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. Even now, especially now, you are not alone. We are with you across the distance to stand together and speak up together and shine together and work together. Go in blessing, dear ones, and be a blessing to a world that needs your care. And let us sing our benediction. Profound thanks to Reverend Dr. Dawson for preaching a word to us today. Profound thanks to Elise Max for sharing about the work of MADP. There's still plenty of time to give to our Faith to Action collection for their important work. And we go forth now and do our important work. We'd love to see you in coffee hour when we get a chance to see one another's faces and chat and catch up. The meeting ID is on the slide. The link will be posted in the chat. And we thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.